appreciate y'all being here today. Uh, apologize for my voice. We're on uh, day six of camp here, so I'm warmed up and, um, you know, really excited about the direction we're going, excited about our whole defensive staff and the players we get to work with, and um, with that, open it up for questions. How has a guy like Juan Bullard come along since uh, you've been you've been since he's arrived at Georgia the last couple of years? You know, uh, Javon's an extremely hard worker. I think uh, you know we ask all of our guys to compete uh, at a certain level every day and strain, and Javon does a great job of that. Um, you know, he's a guy that was part of that COVID class, so you know you learn a lot about those guys when they get here, and uh, you know he's a competitor and and brings the type of you know, energy that we want all of our guys to uh, to have. Yeah, Coach, I guess the position you might work most closely with is inside. So, one, how do you replace all those guys you lost from last year? What do you see from these guys like Tresman and Brandon, Smile uh, Mondo, and all those guys? Yeah, I think um, you never ask somebody to replace somebody else, right? You ask them to be the best version of themselves. So, that's what camp's about is going out there and every day uh, seeking excellence and challenging yourself to be that, be the best version of yourself. And so in that room, um, I think we're doing that every day. And I'm thankful that, you know, we're healthy and guys are pushing and and they're pushing each other. And I think the one thing that uh, the standard that was set from those guys and the guys before them is that, uh, you know, everybody's competing together. And, you know, it's it's about the, the team and about each other. And these guys embrace that as well. And so I did to see where we go. Yeah, I'm just curious. What do you think the best version of Jalen Carter looks like? And how do you help him get the most out of that? Yeah, I think, um, I think the best version of anyone, right, is somebody who plays. When you play defensive football, you have to you know, play at a certain level in terms of your effort, right, and toughness, your mentality, uh, your competitive edge, right? So. The best version for him, anyone else in the front, anyone else in the defense will be those traits, playing as hard as you possibly can, the toughness required, um, and, and competing, right? You got to win your battles, right? And that's what we'll expect of all our guys, and especially him. Clint, you've obviously been with Kirby for a little bit. How much does this defense change year to year based on who's the guy in charge of the room, who's in charge of the defense, calling the Has been has been a couple. Is it a couple? A couple years. A couple years. Six but years. Yeah, it's uh it's been a minute, I guess. I was trying to figure out how many more years it would be to get where, you know, you've had that saying about your wife where you go and say, Hey, I've I've had more li- more years in my life with my wife than I have without her and um you know, I was trying to figure out the other day where where I have to get to to get to that point. But uh I think, you know, when you are coaching defense, you have to evolve with the times, right? Every year, what offenses are going to do to attack you and, and their trends offensively are going to change. So no matter where this defense has existed, no matter who's been in charge of it, no matter what the coaches on staff have been or the players, the goal has been to create a defense that can create problems for offenses, answer the challenges they present, right? So every year, that'll look a little bit different. Um, our top calls every year are a little bit different. Right, the way we use our personnel is a little bit different. You figure out who your best players are, what you need to do successfully, and you do the staff cooperatively to give yourself the best chance on game day. And you know, when you do that, you, know, you get a good product. I was wondering if you could speak on uh, linebackers Ryan Davis and uh, Trent Marshall. I feel like their careers have been a bit hindered by depth and injury up until this point, and they've later turned out. So I was wondering how you see them coming to form. Yeah, um, one, I'm. I'm Really excited that those guys have been guys that have battled it out throughout their career, right? They've had um, some hardships, right? It's part of the game. And they've remained uh, positive. They remain focused and determined. And so, you know, to see them out there competing is, is awesome for me as a coach because you respect what they've done. And, you know, if they continue to do that, I'm hopeful for them, right? So. Right, so, you know, every, every day, 
you know, we go out to practice and and we want to challenge guys to get used to playing with other people, right? So it might be you go out there and, hey, today this guy is going to rotate and play with this other player at linebacker or at safety or a defensive front. I think you're preparing yourself for the whole room to be cohesive. You know, you have 48 guys here without scholarship and walk on on defense, right? And they're all out there, and they'll all get to play with each other. They're, and, you know, to have good on defense, you have to have – um, a real team bond and connection and unity. And so that can't be that I'm comfortable with one guy, right? Because then you're not ready when the next man steps up. So camp, we, you know, we're trying to all grow, but we also are pairing different people with each other and making people get really comfortable being uncomfortable so that we're not reliant on just one person. We're relying on the whole unit. And I think that's how you do it. But how does it You know, when you're here, whether it's year one or year seven, a lot of the stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, or you really do cooperatively, right? That's why that's why it's a, a staff. Obviously, there are roles within the staff, but um, you set out to have a staff, whether it's as a, a full coaching staff, defensive staff, support staff. You want people to complement each other. Um, you want people to be able to, uh, you know, you can't have one person do everything. You got to be able to share responsibility. And, and so, you know, titles and people and things of that nature, they change. But the thing that remains the same is that you go in that room, whether it's as a full staff or if it's a staff, we're working to get on the same page um, and fight, figure out what's best for our team. And then obviously when you get to time where certain responsibilities have to be separate, you do that. But the majority of what we do is, is cooperatively. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, no matter what the roles are. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I understand, obviously, the, the question there, right? But we had 19 players on defense play over 200 snaps last year, right? So, you know, I do think that the team talk on, on defense is extremely important, and it's extremely important on the whole team. You know, you're looking for as many people that can play winning football as possible, right? Um, you know, the individuals that, that stand out a lot of times, like they're, they're going to be guys that, that you can identify that you've already identified potentially. But, you know, the team talk's extremely important this time of year just because the only way to get the standard on defense here is to get that and to get the team and to get everybody playing together at a high level because, you know, as I checked, there's 11 guys on defense at once, right? And everybody has to fit their gap properly in the run game. You run a pressure. Everybody has to be in the right area. You sit there in coverage. You know, certain guys have the flats. Certain guys are responsible deep. And so at the end of the day, the only way to actually be good on defense as a, as a unit is to be a team, right? You'll see great defensive players places sometimes that maybe you're saying, hey, how did they have that guy? And they weren't overly successful on defense and our guys no matter who it's been since we've been here have taken pride in that aspect and you know we do as well as the staff i um, in terms of will you know since he's been here you know last year and obviously moving into this year obviously brings a wealth of experience he's a great staff guy um, we really enjoy working together not just him but our whole defensive staff whole staff in general um, as much as we ever have and so I think he brings a sense of camaraderie, professionalism, experience. He's a great sounding board for ideas. Um, and for as much success he's had in his career, he's extremely humble at the same time. Which I think humility shows a lot about who a person is. Uh, Glenn, back in the spring, we heard a lot about Jamal and Demas Johnson. Just what have you seen from him during the summer and then this early part of fall camp? Yeah, I think he's challenged himself. Um, to be the best version of himself, right? He knows in the summer you attack strength and conditioning to be able to say, hey, I might have an increased role this year, right? So, hey, what do I have to do in my strength and conditioning to be able to play um, whatever role is asked of me, you know, from the team? He's a uh, guy who loves football, right? This is really hard. He's an instinctive physical player. 
And, you know, but, you know, need to continue to see them grow, right? All, everybody needs to continue on day six of practice, right? They got to all continue to grow. But I've seen him try to step up and answer the challenge, um, you know, whether that's him or, you know, that, the questions earlier were about Tresman, you know, Marshall and Ryan Davis. You know, the question was asked about Smile Mund and all those guys. You know, guys in addition to Xavier Sori, Jalen Walker, EJ Lightsey, the whole room understand what's expected in, in terms of running the defense. And there's a level of pressure that applies to you. And so they're all trying to but he's done he's done a great job so far. Just has to continue to grow. Quarterback question, Coach. Uh, tell us a little bit about the candidates that might play opposite Kenny Ringo. Maybe who the candidates are, one of their strengths, and if you touch on uh, Singletary and Humphrey. Yeah, I'll touch. First, I'll touch on the question you asked about um, Slim and Julio. So I think when you look at, at Singletary, he's long. You know, he's competitive. Uh, he loves football. He has good ball skills. Um, Julio is extremely fast, right, the, and, and has great size. And, you know, a guy has, you know, he's, a will, he's willing in terms of his toughness out there, which is required at that position. So, you know, asking about them, they're both, you know, working to become the players they need to at corner, right? Um, for them, they got here this summer, and they're putting in the work, and they're, they're really making good progress. And, and now it's the, hey, how, we're on day six. How can you continue to build and stack days as, as camp gets harder? Um, you know, the rest of the room, you're looking at, at Taylor Everett was here with us for the spring, um, Ambassador, and Alan Green. All those guys are working out there, and we dual train a lot of guys. So, you know, guys have, you, if you go back to the very beginning, Chris Smith started out at, at corner, you know, and, and ended up becoming a safety, right? So we try to dual train everybody. So there'll be other guys that go out there and play as well. Um, and so, you know, that competition is, is well underway and, and gets changed up every day. And we try to mix and match them, right? We don't just have one guy running um, in any group. So they get to go against different wideouts every day and challenge. And so until we get to a scrimmage and really see, you know, who shows up when it's live and the coaches are off the field and it's, it's live tackle, you know, we'll know more about the competition then. Whether it's true or not, one of the headlines all offseason has been this defense is going to be worse. Is that something, whether it's true or not, is that something that you think this current group uses as any sort of motivation or is just a complete look forward to next season? I think that when you look at what we do here defensively, these kids took pride in being a defensive football player when they came here, right? They're part of it, you go back to Georgia since Irk Russell has been known for playing great defense, right? So guys who come here believe in themselves and go be as good as they want to be defensively and, and collectively that we can do that. So I don't think anybody's worried about what other people think about what we're going to be. I don't think they're using it for motivation. I think they go out there every day and are just trying to be the absolute best defense we possibly can. And, you know, all that external stuff, I don't, I don't see a group that needs external motivation. I think they're very intrinsically motivated. And I think that they're focused and they're working the right way right now. Well, I think if you watch us play in nickel, if you look at what our, our star is, our star is really a, a slot corner, which is really how most of the uh, you know National Football League plays their their nickels. So I think we're asking them to be inside linebackers, right? Which in today's day and age of football isn't really a box linebacker anymore. It's an off-ball linebacker. So the whole room knows that in order to be successful, you have to be able to blitz, you have to be able to cover, you have to be able to play in space, right? All, all those factors, traits that in the old school days of 4-3 football, you would say, oh, that's what an outside linebacker does, right? That's basically what you're asking from the whole room. So in order, to, in order for us to be successful defensively, they got to be, you know, have a versatile skill set. Um, you mentioned those guys that obviously have length and are athletic and played kind of on the edge in high school. But that's what the challenge we're, we're asking the whole room to have that. More guys that can do those things, that can be good blitzers, can be good in coverage, can play in space. We can do a lot. We have a lot of flexibility, right, with what we can do defensively. And when we get through the, the two scrimmages and we kind of identify who are, of our, who are our best players, then you'll see our 
rotation and the way we use guys in packages kind of take place as we get ready for games, right? This time right now in camp, we're all, it's a lot of base packages. And then when we figure out, hey, who's our best players and what roles in all rooms, right, in all rooms, then we'll decide, hey, how are we using these guys on third down? How are we using them on first and second down? Um, and you saw every, every year our packages are a little bit different, you know, and so, but I do think fundamentally the nickel is like a, is a slot corner when you look at um, the way defensive football is played most of the time nowadays. Yeah, uh, Nolan is um, Nolan is one of those guys that when you say, hey, if you're going to talk about it, be about it. And he's known for being vocal because he is, but he holds himself to an extremely high standard in terms of how he works. Uh, I think that that you can see that in that room, that that's something that they take pride in. And, you know, defensively, he wants to challenge everybody to do the same thing. He's been a great leader for us. He works really hard every day. He has great toughness. And, he, and right now, um, he's looking to be the best version of himself and improve in areas. You know, he wants to be a better pass rusher. Right? He's working extremely hard at that. And he's really stepped out even more in terms of what he's doing as a leader. And that room, um, you know, I, I see a lot of guys matching that. Robert Beal is, has a lot of the same traits in terms of maybe not being as vocal, but in terms of how he carries himself in practice. You look at a guy like Chaz Chambliss, who's extremely tough and a hard worker. MJ Sherman matches that. You can go guy by guy. And then when you walk in and you have freshmen, you know, you have Marvin Jones, Dare Smith, CJ Madden, and they see a room that's extremely hardworking and tough, not just from one guy, but from all the guys ahead of them, then they know what the expectation is. And so, you know, when you see them out there, that, that kind of becomes the reputation of the room. Coach, obviously there's big shoes to fill at at defensive end. What have you seen from Tyrion Ingram-Dawkins as he enters his second season and, and it makes you confident that he can be one of them? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you know, when he went into the spring, he really attacked his body and his ability to be a guy that, you know, can play on the edge. And, you know, he continued. That's, that's, a, that's a battle that you, you take as a big guy every single day, all through the summer into fall camp. You know, the biggest thing is when you're lean, when you're leaner, and you can be quicker and more explosive, it's beneficial, right? That's at every position. And so he's really done that, and we want that in position, whether it's him or Tramel Walthour or Michael Williams, those guys, when they're out there, you want them to be guys that are, you know, able to be quick, athletic, lean, guys that can, you know, make plays in terms of pursuit, but also be stout enough to go inside. So I think that his growth, um, especially in the spring when, he was, when, he, when he's lean, when he leaned himself up, it helped him. You know, I think the, the saying that's lived here for a long time now has been if you're good enough, you're old enough, right? So camp is about figuring out who our best players are, right? And that doesn't have, you know, a birth date on it. So we need to figure out who our best players are. You challenge them early, right? You challenge guys early across the board, whether they're old or young, to see, hey, what can, what can they learn? What can they handle? What do we need to work on them with? What do they do best? And then as you go in and we go through our – Scrimmage one kind of lessens a little bit, and now you're fine-tuning it, and you're saying, hey, okay, who performed and who did it? And as you see guys perform, you know, ultimately it's the coach's job to coach, right? We're teachers. <laughs> so when you look at it, and if you identify a guy who can help you in terms of talent, no matter how old he is, then let's figure out how we can coach that guy to help us and create a role for him, whether that's as a guy who plays a lot or in a certain package, right? So, you know, I think once you identify who those guys are, and make, then we make sure that we attack it to get them up to the, that line that we need to be at in terms of ability to be on the field and help us. When we talked to Keeler Ringo this spring, he talked a lot about working on his confidence in order to help him. As a coach, how do you go about instilling confidence in him that way you can go out there and play with it? Right, I think it's important for you to believe in your players, right? Like, you know personally 
who believes in you. And so I think, right, no matter their age, no matter their experience, is extremely important as a coach because if you don't believe in them, why would they believe in themselves? So I think starting with that, if you want to instill confidence in any player, right, you got to build them up. You got to challenge them when they're wrong. Sometimes the best thing to do after a guy has a mistake is love on them, right? You can correct it in a meeting room. So in terms of building any player's confidence, young or old, man, it starts with us. Believe in them, coach them, lead them, right? Challenge them when they need it. But they need, they need to know that their coaches believe in them and their teammates believe in them. And that goes back to the whole question of, hey, team is really important, right? The more that we're a team, the more that we're united, guys will believe in themselves. You know, the thing I tried to do when I was a GA, right, is always think about how I can be the best GA and whatever that was. And then it ended up being something where I became you know, a slightly higher role, still support staff, and then I just try to do that job the best I could. And so I've done that since I've been here. And I really try not to be, like, too forward thinking. There's times and places for that. But ultimately, people don't, you know, that quote that Coach Smart had last year before training camp about, you know, success coming to those who are too busy to be looking for it, it's a very real quote. You know, it's not coach speak. It's a real thing. So I try to live that. Preach to your players, be where your feet are. And that's what it's all about. Thanks, Glenn. Everybody hold your seats, please. Appreciate y'all.